Now we can check our formula to see that it makes sense. So here's our situation. Incoming particle 1 with velocity v hitting an initially stationary particle 2 with initial velocity of 0. These are the formulas that we got for the final velocities of particles 1 and 2. Is momentum conserved? The final momentum, m1 v1 plus m2 v2, so let's just plug in the numbers, m1 times here's our expression for v1, m2 times here's our expression for v2. We've got a common denominator m1 plus m2, so we can look at both of these. We have a common factor in the numerator of v, so let's not distribute that through all the terms, let's just leave that out. So we're left with m1 m1 minus m1 m2 plus 2m1 m2. So that leaves us with 2m1 m2 minus m1 m2 gives us a term of m1 m2. Now we can factor out m1 from both of these. We have m1 v times m1 plus m2 over m1 plus m2. Oh look, that ratio is 1. It cancels and so we're just left with m1 v, which was the initial momentum of the incoming particle. Excellent. Now let's check for conservation of kinetic energy. This is the final kinetic energy of the system. 1 half m1 v1 squared plus 1 half m2 v2 squared. So we'll plug in our formulas that we got before, v1 and v2, and see what they come out to. So here's our v1, here's our v2. We square them. To keep things simple, we'll just leave the denominator as m1 plus m2 squared. We're not going to expand that. It turns out we don't need to. So in the numerator, we've got this factor of v squared and everything. So we can take out m1 v squared, and now we have this m1 minus m2 squared. So that's m1 squared minus 2 m1 m2 plus m2 squared. The next term is a little bit simpler because it's not a binomial, it's just a monomial. And so we square 2m1 to get 4m1 squared. Now we see in the numerator both terms have a factor of m1 v squared in them. So we've got an m1 v squared right in the beginning, that's pretty explicit here. But the right hand term we've got the m1 inside the parentheses and the v squared out. And so this whole thing, if we take out the m1 v squared, leaves us 4m1 m2. So here we've got the first three terms from the first term for this trinomial, the square of m1 minus m2, and then the last term is the plus 4m1 m2. So we see we've got the m1 squared minus 2m1 m2 plus 4m1 m2, so this becomes plus 2m1 m2 plus m2 squared. Well look, m1 squared plus 2m1 m2 plus m2 squared is just m1 plus m2 squared. So we can factor that back into its square. And we've pulled out a factor of 1 half m1 v squared. Now this ratio, m1 plus m2 squared divided by m1 plus m2 squared, just is 1, and we're left with 1 half m1 v squared, which is the initial kinetic energy of particle 1 coming in. So that's exactly right. The kinetic energy of our particles after the collision is exactly equal to the kinetic energy of the particles before the collision. So our formulas do satisfy the conditions and we've done our algebra correctly. Let's look at some simple cases. So the first simple case is going to be where the incoming particle and the struck particle have the same mass. We know what's going to happen in that situation. The incoming particle is going to stop dead and the struck particle is going to continue on with the same velocity that the incoming particle had. Let's see if our formula reproduces that. V1 is going to be V, the initial velocity, times M1 minus M2, well that's just M minus M, divided by M1 plus M2, that's 2M. That gives us zero. The outgoing particle is now 2M1, that's 2M, divided by M1 plus M2, also 2M, so that gives us V. That works perfectly. What if the struck particle, number two, is much, much, much more massive than the incoming particle, particle one? That's essentially having a perfectly elastic ball hitting a rigid wall, a brick wall. What's going to happen? It's going to bounce back with speed v, we know, and the struck particle isn't going to move at all. So here we have v1 equals v times m1 minus m2, and since m1 is really small compared to m2, that's just minus m2, divided by m1 plus m2, and again, since m1 is really small, that's just essentially m2. So we have v times minus m2 over m2, or minus v. It bounces back at the same speed. Excellent. And then for the brick wall, which better not move, we have 2m1 divided by m1 plus m2. Well, since m1 is much smaller than m2, m1 plus m2 is essentially just m2. We're left with m1 over m2, since m1 is so small, m1 over m2 is essentially 0, and we've got v times 0 is 0. Excellent. What if it's the other way around? What if it's the brick wall hitting the particle? We know from experience that the brick wall, if it hits a particle, is not going to change its velocity, so that should continue with just velocity v. What's the particle going to do? It, it turns out, is going to bounce off with twice the velocity. Why is that? We know that their relative speeds after the collision have to be the same as their relative speeds before the collision, and that's by a matter v. So the incoming wall, brick wall, continues on at speed v, 
the outgoing particle better be going away at 2v so that the speed difference between them is still v. Let's see if that's what we get. So v1 is v times m1 minus m2 over m1 plus m2, since m1 is much bigger, m1 minus m2 is essentially m1, and m1 plus m2 is essentially m1, so that just gives us v, nothing changed. For the struck particle, the very light one, we have 2m1 divided by m1 plus m2, since again m1 is much bigger than m2, 2m1 stays as 2m1, and m1 plus m2 is essentially just m1. So 2m1 over m1 is just 2, and the struck particle moves off with speed 2v.